What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? How's, How's it going? going? So, Tyler, how are you that, doing? Is that really loud? I broke. I broke my chair. Oh, you broke. You broke it. Yeah, oh, nice. I'll pay for it. Just send me the <laughs> send me the bill. <laughs> yeah. um, so, Todd, it? let's start with you. How'd you come up with the idea for the show? Um, I didn't. I stole it from. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, how did I come up? I, you know, as you guys probably know, there's a decent amount of people on TV that um, don't like other people, uh, cynics, people that hate people, um, and I'm I'm not one of those people. I actually uh, think that there's some decent people in this world. So I actually started from uh, the point of view of I'm going to have a, a, this eternal optimist, um, somebody who trusts people before they mistrust them, and uh, and really does appreciate every moment he has in this world. And I was like, well, how am I going to make that believable? So to me, it was you have to have this near-death experience. Um, but his near-death experience was literally in his first moments in the world. So I started from the place of that as the character. Um, and then I just thought, well, what world am I going to drop him in? And I thought, well, why not surround him by death? Um, and have him have <laughs> this unique does. relationship with death. And um, so that was the seed of the character. I mean, I just started from a character I thought I might want to write for hopefully 100 episodes or more. Um, if people actually, if people actually uh, tune in and watch it, um, you don't have any other choices in, in television <laughs> these days. So um, this is the only show you can watch on Wednesday nights. Um, and then, you know, look, I grew up, uh, you guys will never guess this, but I grew up in the 80s. I look much, much younger than that. Um, uh, but uh, I loved shows like Moonlighting and Magnum P.I. And, um, and I just sort of, this was sort of my love letter to those shows as well. And, and then I sort of started working on who the love interest was going to be and, and all that. So, I mean, it just sort of slowly evolved uh, with two characters I, I really wanted to write for hopefully many years. And Morris, what was it that drew you to this character? Why'd you pick this part? Um, oh, yes. Of course. Oh, you have that? No, no, no. I don't give all my mind. <laughs> yeah, I, this is mine. You don't share. <laughs> that I finally told Well, Jaina like, really <laughs> doesn't share. So. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, no, I'm talking about, yeah. So, um, no, so uh, basically, no, when I read the script, this, this is loud. Um, when I, go a little further. A little is that, that's a good idea. Seat. She helps me out. Um, basically, no, I read the script. chemistry. I read the script, and... Um, um, you know, just an opportunity to play uh, a, a doctor who was smart, caring, loving, funny, and witty. Um, you know, and really, when I look, like Todd said, he's very positive. And you know, look at the landscape of what's out there in television right now. There are a lot of roles out there that are that are great. Um, you know, that you know would be great for actors to play. But I think for this particular role, there wouldn't. There's not another role. I can I can honestly say there's not another role on TV that I'd rather play right now than this role. And Jaina, what about you? Well, I don't think I had a choice. I think, <laughs> I mean, okay, so I, 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 well, I, this pilot season for me, it was my second pilot season. So I'm new, I'm not a veteran like this one. And so every, every, every role I went out for, of course I wanted, so it's not like I had a choice. But this one just happened to fit so perfectly. You know, I mean, my dad's a homicide detective. This couldn't have been written more perfectly for, for the, my dream role. So I'm, I'm really grateful that, that you created Via. Um, Cause I, I, I just felt like it, it fit like a glove and, it was it was amazing, huge opportunity for me because I get to work with this guy and then be tough and sexy and badass like every actress in LA, right? <laughs> That's good. How much research? Sorry, how much research did you guys do for the part? Um, I played a doctor before, um, so I kind of got used to some technical terms. He was a little bit different than this guy, a lot different than this guy, mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, that was about it. I mean, I mean, you know, it's you know, Todd was a wealth of information. I mean, luckily, um, he you know he had done his research, so we didn't have to do ours. No, um, luckily he <laughs> luckily, luckily he was on set quite a bit, so I was asking a bunch of questions and just trying to understand the, the medical terminology and how things are pronounced and what they actually mean. And I made up some stuff, and he he didn't let me use it and all that type <laughs> of stuff. <laughs> and Jaina, how about you? Well, I called my dad for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I was like, Dad, what does this mean? There's <laughs> I mean, he 
he, he's the best. He was actually in the pilot. He was one of the guys at the end who arrested the the Prince 305 guy. Wow. So cool. he, he, yeah, I, I had a lot of, I channeled a lot of my dad. And that was the only research I did. Yeah, Jana would walk on the set and say, uh, yeah, I don't think uh, a detective would say this. I'm like, well, that's true, that's why, true. why would you say that? And she's like, because uh, my dad did it for 25 years. I'm like, yeah. mm, all right. <laughs> and, then I, and then I met her dad, and I was like, um, you're super intimidating. And uh, whatever you say, I will basically do. Um, right. he's, he's, uh, he's kind of a badass, your dad. Right. So. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I keep him on my good side. <laughs> and Todd, what about you? Did you do a lot of research for this? Um, I did. I mean, look, there's this thing um, that has come out recently called Google, and what you do is I've heard of it. <laughs> type in these crazy things like, how does hair get darker on a table after you're already dead? And things come up, and you're like, oh, that's not actually accurate or helpful. So I'll, I actually um, had this... It's like a firm that you email questions to, and they then take your questions and then call doctors or pathologists, and then they either call you back or they send you these long emails about how the medicine will actually work. So I used that as I was writing the pilot and actually while we were, while we were shooting. Um, and they also would take any medical terms and do an audio file for how you, um, how you pronounce each of these crazy things like tympanosclerosis and weird stuff that Morris was like, yo. <laughs> what what is uh, yeah petechiae which was, botulinum 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 um, so yeah I mean I, I had like this resource that I could lean on because it turns out I am not a doctor um, yeah it's crazy right uh, but yeah so yeah I did a lot of my own research and then I had these people help me out talk about how you're going to develop the show from here where can we see it going. Um, we're not. This is the only episode, you guys. Uh, this is all I had in the... So hopefully other writers will come in and figure this out. Um, you know, here's the thing with this show, which I, I, am, I am dedicated to pulling off, which is like in this TV landscape, I don't necessarily want to do the knock on a door, talk to a, a suspect, and then go on to the next suspect um, and have it be like a, tr a traditional case a week without a bunch of great character stuff. So... Um, what I really want to do, uh, and I reference The Good Wife a lot because uh, my wife uh, made me watch it now. I love it. Um, but that show does such a great job of, of fusing a lot of great character story, personal stories, um, uh, soapy, salacious, but interesting emotional stories within a law case each week. And while we're tonally very different, um, that's going to be what we do every week so that the audience gets a nice um, blend of great character moments, great character scenes. You learn so much about not only these two characters, but their friends, their families, the suspects, the suspects, or the victims' families. Um, to me, I want it to be kind of a hybrid of serialized and procedural, so that you just don't feel like you're coming in every week to just watch a case be solved, but that you're actually you know, pulling back the layers of hopefully characters that you start to grow attached to and love, and you're going to want to see them together at some point. I'm going to make you wait an incredibly long time for that to happen. <laughs> um, you know, to me, this was always like an out of sight like relationship that Clooney, Jennifer Lopez like magic, and these guys luckily had it when they first met, and that's when I knew I, I might have a show. But um, it's going to be, you know, really leaning into the characters and what makes these people tick and what makes them interesting, and then having a cool, clever case to complement that, um, but never having just the cases dominate the show every week, because I think that that might get a little familiar. Talk about the role that humor plays as well. I mean, it's so great to see a procedural that has a great sense of humor about it as well. Well, I mean, who doesn't love to laugh, right? And, uh, and um, while there's a, uh, you know, somebody who's lost their life every week, we're going to laugh a lot, you guys. We're going to have a blast, right? We're going to yuck it up. Um, that guy deserved to die. Uh, but, it was bad. Um, you know, I love to mix tone. I mean, it's like that's the most realistic approach to, to a show, I think, because that's our lives. Like, we all feel this range of emotions in any given day, and we all suffer tragedies, but also have those great moments where you can't stop laughing uh, because, you know, somebody cracked an amazing joke or you just witnessed something really funny. And I think this show's going to encompass all of that. 
Jana, were you a boxer or was that a skill they asked you to train for? I dabbled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she can box. I, 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 used to, I used to just mess around a little bit with boxing and well, I used to be a professional salsa dancer mm. for like 15 years and picking up choreography, just being in tune with my body, it came really easy. So the boxing was fun. My husband is a, was an MMA fighter, so he mm. taught me a little, a little something, something. <laughs> And so, that's it. So note to self, keep the your husband and dad on my good side. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right, right. Oh, I'll stand there, good side. Men, like right, right by right. my side. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Like my, that's I, my, I'm well, a will we be seeing more of that to come? Todd. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I really am like a fan of, of talking to uh, the, you know, the cast and saying, well, what are your actual real life talents? Can you play the guitar? Can you sing? Can you dance? Can awesome. you knock people out in one punch? <laughs> um, yeah. You know, to me, it's like if they're uh, open to letting their real life talents come into the show, we'll write to that. Um, and Morris can sing like a bird. <laughs> like <laughs> You can't, can't, you can't sing. Um, uh, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, we'll definitely be seeing all of her dancing and fighting talents in the series. But Morris can smile. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm mean. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been enjoying that smile, haven't we? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it served you well, that smile. It, it that, served you well. <laughs> I mean, I, I, like the past few roles I've done, I, I've been kind of like mired in a lot of emotional turmoil. So it was really fun and refreshing to come to this role. And talk about the, your wardrobe as well, because you, the clothes definitely do make the man of this character. It does. I looked in Todd's closet and grabbed out a few things. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, it was, it, was, it was a conscious choice with the, um, with the wardrobe coordinator. And her name was? Oh, yeah, uh, Kelly Jones. Kelly Jones, yeah. yeah. Kelly Jones, uh, myself, and, and uh, Richard Shepard, our director. Um, we had a lot of choices. We kind of just constructed one day in New Orleans. We just constructed the, the character's wardrobe right there. And, and you know, I can I think the the um, car I think would also be part of his wardrobe. So how much are you enjoying that car? I, I'm enjoying it because we were, we thought about it, we thought a lot about the car, and people were like, well, Miami, you know, Ferrari, Bentley, all of that. But I think we had a we have a pretty good choice here with this one. Yeah, we we yeah. You know, he's a guy that appreciates everything old and new, and um, and we went we went classic with it, and we went with yellow, which you'll we used to have a line in the pilot, which was uh, somebody asked him why would you drive a yellow car, which let's be honest can be kind of like a d-baggy sort of color, and mm. um, <laughs> but it, yellow in, in 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 many cultures represents happiness and optimism, so there is a real reason why he went with a yellow car, and we just thought it'd be cool, like let's go with a, with a sh with a car that's sort of very specific to his personality and. Maybe Maybe hopefully if the show is a success would be sort of like a memorable iconic thing that you remember about it as opposed to like a 2015 yellow Ferrari which let's be honest is usually a guy with like really slick back hair who kind of goes to would have been tough would have been a challenge for me super tight huh? <laughs> would have been a challenge for me but yeah, you know, right? like, yeah. we'd have to put you in like tight weird like snakeskin pants and, like, <laughs> we don't want to do that right, right, right. no or, or do we <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep the tight pants to, to Via. Yeah. Don't put it out there. <laughs> yeah. Talk about setting the show in Miami. It, it, it almost becomes another character in the show. Yeah, you know, um, we talked about a bunch of different cities uh, where it would be set. Originally, uh, it was scripted in, in LA, and then um, it shifted to Miami at some point just because uh, once Richard Shepard actually came on board, um, we just started talking about if we really wanted the city to become a character in the show, not that LA couldn't and not that you know many other cities couldn't, um, but Miami, you know, what we know about it and what people have in their heads is sort of like South Beach and the clubs and the cars and all that <laughs> stuff, right? Um, uh, that's Miami. That's Miami. Um, There's going to be some dancing. But, but, in, but in series, we're not going to always do cases that are at the beach or at pool clubs and, and whatnot. Um, we're what, 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 we're not? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, we're we're going to do, do a lot of them. Okay, okay. Um, cool. But we also want to see, just as you saw in the pilot, we want to see Little Havana and all the other, Miami has all these great little like neighborhoods that have these pockets of different cultures and different architecture and, and people with different personalities. And that's the show. I mean, the show is going to be very diverse. And Miami is a very diverse and sexy city. But um, it just seemed like it, it 
it would um, allow us to have a lot of interesting guest stars from different cultural backgrounds. And um, it hasn't been, it's been shot, obviously. There's been plenty of things. There have been, there have been other shows, CSI Miami and Dexter. And, um, but, you know, we're hoping to find those unique little pockets of the city although it may be in Los Angeles. Um, uh, you know, we just, it just seemed like a really interesting place to set it. And it also goes, I thought, it, it paired nicely with his personality and his sense of optimism in a city that is so kinetic and so, you know, sexy. And when you're there, it's like, you can't help but sort of smile when you're in Miami, especially like, you know, when we we're, were staying by the beach and it's like, God, you have to be a, in a really horrible mood to not have that city sort of infect you. So where are you shooting it? Are you shooting in Miami or, uh, or am I not allowed to ask? <laughs> well, no, um, I think, uh, look, Miami, for all of the amazing things Miami brought uh, aesthetically, it's a tricky town to shoot in. Um, it is. It's, it's difficult. And, you know, uh, locations are tricky and there are challenges and it's expensive. Um, and so what we're going to do is probably a little bit of a hybrid wherein our stages will likely be in Los Angeles where we build the lab and his, his apartment and all of that. And then and the hope is that for you know every handful of weeks we would go to Miami to shoot exteriors and, and hopefully at some point get them to shoot some scenes there. So it's going to be kind of like a little bit of both. Great. Yeah. Um, I want to explore more of the chemistry between the two of them. Was that instantaneous? Like how did that happen? Were you cast together? No, no, no. It's okay. You, you, okay, okay, fine. <laughs> Different than that one. Did you guys have a chemistry well, you know read together? Well, you know what's crazy? We didn't even. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but we didn't even do a chemistry read. We just. It was just like. It was instant. I mean, I don't know. I. I, I honestly felt this energy from from you, and. I. I. I knew you were gonna be cool and and sweet and I just I when I asked you I remember I was like are you from New York because he has this swag it's it's ridiculous and so I mean we instantly we instantly clicked it was great so on and off camera we're just like this the whole time you know just like that my arm hurt a lot from that too <laughs> <laughs> no yeah I, I agree we, we instantly instantly clicked I mean you know just working with, with Jane just how, who she is as a person and and just as an actress I mean she's a very talented actress but like she said she, she has everything she has the look she has the toughness the sexiness I mean keep we're going, so keep, keep yeah, going, I know, I know it's looks sexiness <laughs> tough um, everything beautiful thank you, no. thank you, thank you. Uh, so but yeah so it was just one of those things to where it just everything just kind of kind of fell into place and how um, much of it is a challenge for you as actors to have these characters with these great backstories? You're not just coming into a procedural and playing, you know, a detective and a, and a doctor. You've got great backstories to be able to tell as well. It, it's so fun because we're not, you know, your cookie cutter doctor and your cookie cutter detective. It, it makes it really fun and enjoyable. Yeah, without a doubt. And also, I think a lot of it is is tied. I mean, he he, he really allows a, such a collaborative process with this whole thing. Yeah, he's a, such a great actor, and a great writer. <laughs> And, creator and, and all that. He's beautiful and he's sexy. Oh no, that was Jana. Um, no, no, but he definitely allows that. I mean, a lot of writers on TV is like their word is bond. It's like you say what's on that page and you do not veer from that. And Todd, which allows you allows us to be free and, and collaborate. And you know, he hit us over the head a couple of times. You know, we're not, you know, but it's it's really it's been really great. How much more are we going to find out about these characters? Is that going to unfold as the season goes on? Yeah, I mean, that's what, you know, the beauty of putting together a writing staff once you get picked up to series is I have these eight other great minds um, in the room. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, the challenge is for, you know, unlike a movie where you have these two hours where you can unpack everything you want in two hours, like we have hopefully many, many hours to sort of get to know um, about all the amazing qualities they have, but all the things that, like, um, affect them and keep them up at night uh, and, you know, their own secrets and, and their, their own family dramas and all those complications are, I think, the thing that people come back, to. why I continue to watch the shows that I love. I mean, while, yes, I, I enjoy a case being wrapped up in the end and catching a bad guy, ultimately, you know, if we don't peel back the layers of these characters in a really interesting way and, and you know, the, the audience isn't attached to them and interested in that, you know, I don't think that we have a, a great chance of, of surviving. Um, so my staff, we're starting with what 
excites us about these characters first, not cases. We're going to come up with cases. And hopefully the way we take you through a case that maybe you've seen a version of in Bones or Castle or one of the other shows it will be a little bit different because it's these characters taking you through it. But And we're going to have that. But to me, the show will live and die by your attachment to, to all the characters and having, I, I would love for the audience to have different favorites. You know, I didn't get to spend a tremendous amount of time with um, uh, Pippi and TMI in the lab just because it's a product of a pilot. You only have 42 minutes, but we will. We're going to flesh out all these characters. and We're going to meet Rosewood's mom and dad and um, Via's mom and the complications of her relationship with her dad. It's going to be, you know, that's the stuff that is really exciting. That's great. And I should also mention, too, you've got a pretty good time slot. You want to talk about that? Yeah, I don't know if you guys have heard about this show called Empire, but it's on TV, <laughs> and um, it does okay. Uh, so we're on we're on before that, which some people are like, oh, don't you want to come on after that? And the answer is no, <laughs> do not, because then you have to hold that whole audience. Um, we're hoping to find our own audience uh, coming on just before them. But yeah, I mean, it was <clears throat> while we're very different shows tonally, and, and um, obviously we're a procedural; they're heavily serialized. Um, you know, as you could tell from the pilot, like music is going to be a big part of our show. We're not going to be performing it because Morris can't sing, apparently. <laughs> Dang it. Um, God. Morris. So work on that voice. <laughs> and you can only dance. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, I'm kidding. They're very talented people. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, it's going to be. It, it's an amazing time slot. I mean, that's it was a very choice spot, and it's up to us to make the most of it. And our show is going to have its own identity, but I think that hopefully people enjoy our show in 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 its own way. And then Empires has its own vibe and flavor, and hopefully it's a night of uh, just great fun. So you're already planning the crossover then. <laughs> you know, uh, you joke, but uh, I mean, look, in success, I, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if w one of their characters crossed into our world or, or, or one of theirs crossed into ours. So, yeah. I want to open up to you guys if you, any of you have any questions. Wait, really quick. Okay. Oh, sorry. Before you, okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. Hi. Hi. Sorry. I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's refreshing to see a, sh a procedural show that has such a playful feel to it. There were many funny moments, but I'd like to know about off, off camera, what was the funniest moment on the set? Oh my God! <laughs> the guy, oh my, come, Kamal, Kamal. He plays Juju. Juju, the guy in the hot tub. He had us dying. Oh my gosh! So he's there in the hot tub, you know, man spread with the girls right there. And then, okay, so <laughs> Morris and I are coming, walking to our marks. But before that, you know, music is on, the, the extras are dancing, and he's there like that. <laughs> With his tongue sticking out, oh my goodness, we couldn't, we couldn't hold it. We, could, we also couldn't use that. We could not use that. <laughs> it was, it was like, too much. His tongue was like sticking out, and he was, oh my gosh, it was. And he'll be back. He'll be back. He He's gonna be, be like our huggy bear. The return of Juju. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, go ahead in the first row. Um, Morris, most of your careers and movies, you've done some TV before. What are the challenges of shooting a TV drama, and how are they different? Than Oh, um, just the pace. The the pacing is 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 a lot quicker in in TV. But a lot of times I, I like that because you know you'll do a film, you'll sit in your trailer for like three hours and not shoot a scene. When you look at that schedule on a TV show, you get there and you are working. And I actually I actually like that better actually when I know my lines. <laughs> uh -huh. Go ahead. I, I saw Anthony Michael Hall, and he just said guest starring. Will he be uh, recurring in the show? Um, we are we are actively working on locking him down. Um, uh, he's fantastic. I did five or six episodes of Psych, uh, which is a show I did before this with him. And yeah, the answer is I'm very optimistic that he will be part of our show. And and uh, he's great. And there, his energy with Morris was great. And and my hope in series is that he actually ends up having this sort of big brother protection over Via because he has so much respect for her as a, as one of his. Uh, as is one of his detectives, and that will create a nice little triangle of conflict between the three of them as they bond. So the the short answer is, God, I hope so, because I love him, and he's still got incredible comic timing, and he's a pretty damn good dramatic actor, too. So, yeah, we're trying to get him to come back and play with us for a lot of the episodes. 
Go ahead. So, Beaumont Rosewood, is it your first street, first dog? Like, <laughs> 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 yes, where did this name come from? <laughs> Sorry, I meant to ask uh, that. Excellent question. Good question. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't remember exactly how I came up with the name. There was a, the, sh the show I was working on just prior, while I was writing this actually, um, I, I used to drive down Rosewood Street in LA, which is a street in Hollywood all the time. Um, and I just thought, well, it has like a nice ring to it. It has like, it rolls off the tongue. There's a lot of nicknames that can be born from it. I think I started, I think that's where I got that part. Beaumont just sounded kind of like, it sounded retro, but cool. Um, and I just thought you would never forget it. But it wasn't so weird that I was like, I didn't feel like I was trying so hard to give him like a weird first name. Um, and he's a junior, so it's also like, there's a family history to it as well. But I don't know, it just seemed kind of cool. No, it is, I was asking. <laughs> <laughs> and Santa Texas is where I'm from, by the way. Yeah, San Antonio, yeah. Speaking of names really quick, um, oh, we're, 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 we're having a little us. trouble figuring out my first name. I'm Detective Blank uh, Via, so if you want to fill in the blank and... <laughs> and I know you spent so much time on one name. But what here's the problem. Together? We tried about 30 names, and none of them cleared legally because it's a whole thing. But if somebody has that name in Miami, then you can't use it. And so it has to be something kind of so weird because there's so many Vias in Miami. Anything? So if anybody has I'll any take, good ideas, I'll take, yeah. I'll take Deborah's and yeah. Marisa, Marisa Villa. No. Marisa, that's Marisa terrible. Marisa Villa, I like that. Marisa. Yeah, Marisa. Marisa Villa, yeah, Marisa. That's how you say it, Marisa? Marisa, yeah. Marisa. Yeah, Marisa. I don't think they should be laughing when we come up with your first name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love it if we came up with the name here. That'd be amazing. I'm all up for it, because if I have to think about your first name for five more minutes, I'm going to like. I know, you see that's if you it's, guys could yeah. What if you never? What if we never hear your first name? What if you never hear it? Would we need it though? No, I think that should be a thing. Like we, like Kramer, like, like Kramer, like we just never know her name. Lorelai. 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 Uh, do you guys, was it done on purpose? Uh, there's it's such a diverse cast and, you know, with such prominent roles and leading roles for minorities, was that, was that a, a conscious thing? Or do you guys feel like that's something that's really important for the show or, or the flavor of the show? Or, I mean, you guys introduced the, the, the two young women in the lab and they're getting married, so like, right. that's another voice. Mm -hmm. and, like, it, I guess talk a little bit about that if you don't want yeah, I mean, even the pilots that I wrote prior to this, the last two years that did not go to series, because I failed, um, also had just very... just led to this success. Yeah, they, yeah that's right. Um, I spin. They also had uh, uh, very diverse characters. And to me, I've said this in all the other interviews I've had, like, they always say, write what you know, right? Um, and uh, yes, I know how it is to grow up in a, in a white household in San Antonio, Texas. But um, in series... Uh, when you're hope, hoping to do seven, eight, nine seasons uh, of television, to me, the, the, the different cultural backgrounds of your characters, um, the different political views, their different sexual orientation, it all creates interesting conversations and story. Um, and a lot of it I am not familiar with, I haven't lived it, but what that also um, uh, breeds for me is a collaboration with my cast. My writing staff is incredibly diverse. I have five diversity writers, three women, two males on my writing staff. Um, and again, I think it just, it helps the collaborative um, environment and the stories you generate when you have people that aren't all alike. And to me, that was interesting. It's challenging. So I'm not really writing what I know. I'm writing what's challenging me. And that's tricky. Um, you know, you have to hire the right people and, and have great people to collaborate with. Um, so to me, it was just more interesting. Um, you know, uh, I spent a lot of years in New York, and um, it was just a, a pretty refreshing uh, city to be in. And in Miami, the same thing. So um, I just wanted to sort of. Well, I always said if I had my own show, I didn't want it to be a bunch of people that looked and sounded like me and grew up like me. 
happen. So uh, in the beginning, uh, how did you sell your show to, to Fox? Like, how did you differentiate yourself uh, among the other uh, crime shows that are out today? I mean, I, I never start and I've sold procedurals before, but I never start with saying, here's what's going to make the case so amazing every week in this show. I start by saying, here's why you're going to watch Rosewood every week and why I think an audience will love to watch him every week, why I desperately want to write this character for hopefully multiple seasons. I always start with what makes them tick. I always say addictions, afflictions, and fears. It's like we all have, we all have something in each of those categories and that's what sort of defines us and makes us tick and I usually start with what they're addicted to for Rosewood life. Um, what is he scared of? Not necessarily death but dying well before his time and not being able to soak up all the different things that the world and the people that you meet bring. Um, so you know in afflictions he has many. Uh, there's many things that um, pain him that you'll see in series and haunt him. Um, and the same thing for, for Via. So I usually start with what makes them interesting human beings and why they're going to really pop on the page first and why they're going to pop on the screen. Okay. Who's going to close it out? Other than that? This one's for Jane. What was your favorite My favorite scene? Knocking out the guy at the very last, yeah. um, <laughs> and, and, and the bottom of the the boat. It was it was the last scene of the entire pilot, mm -hmm. and I remember I had to I had to swing with my left, <laughs> my left. So it, it, it was it was a little hard because we you know with the angle and I'm not a lefty and so but it was fun and we did it like maybe four times yeah and that was it six o'clock in the morning at six o'clock in the morning yeah from being up at five thirty or starting at five thirty the day before yeah so she likes to just punch like people to, in I like the face to it's like, like yeah. <laughs> no, it's not the emotional scenes none of the stuff with more she's like punching a no, random right. guy out at six o'clock it, so, it was so yeah. Note to saying, self. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you all so much for coming. We hope you'll tune you. in in the fall. Thank you, thank you to the cast. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming.